Welcome everybody to Games and Vapes with Midnight Fang and my co-host Games of Aeon. Today we're Hello. talking Today we're gonna talk about our titles that we are most excited for that came out of E3. Games of Aeon, would you like to go first? Um, uh, I've only really watched the PS4 conference, I mean, as you know. Uh, there's a game that was kind of seen around on Facebook. Everyone thought it was kind of like fake, or everyone was kind of like, there's no way it's going to come out. But the game is named uh, Days Gone. It's a just a giant... Um, what looks to be just from the trailer, it's like survival, maybe a little bit of crafting because some of the things in there, like uh, from the trailer we saw the character riding on a bike and it definitely doesn't look like a bike that you just picked up from the side of a street and drove off with it. It looks like you just kind of pieced it together. So maybe there's some crafting involved, but um, more importantly it's a zombie horde game and I've been waiting for a game that's gonna have like hundreds of enemies coming at you instead of just like one or two or like a horde of five or six. Um, but that that game also has some like stealth to it. If you've seen the E3 trailer, he's kind of sneaking around. And my favorite two of my I have two favorite parts is one where he blows a hole in the dam and the horde of zombies come in and then you save his friend, yeah. but then you see this. Zombie bear with barbed wire and stuff coming out of his, out of his skin. Yeah, and that's another thing about the game that I noticed. So, it, it, it's not like it's just thinking of like, um, just zombie humans. It's also taking the account that animals can get infected too. Right. And then, uh, I think my favorite scene in that trailer. Oh, I love this scene. It was when he was sneaking up to the camp. He pulled out a bear trap that almost got him, actually, I think. And he uh, drags it over into a bush, sets the trap, walks over to another area, and chucks a pebble towards it. Guy walks towards that where the pebble was thrown, he gets his leg caught in it. So I'm thinking the game may have some, like, really, really good, like, uh, NPC programming. Right. Which I really hope it will, because we don't have very many games that have really good NPCs. Um, guess we'll move on to you. Okay. One, this title I have never played before. Uh, it's always gone through Nintendo, but this time they're going to do Sony with the PS4, and it's called Monster Hunter World. Like I have never played any of those but it looks really cool uh, what got me interested in is uh, I don't remember this is in the trailer but the guy comes up he's a gunner class which means he does a lot of damage really fast and he just unloads on a t-rex so, yeah yeah so it looks like not only they're like giant fish it's like there are monsters from all over, not just dinosaurs. And also that game could be played with friends, play with a squad. So it's definitely a multiplayer game that I'm looking forward to. Right, right. Um, actually, I did a little bit of research into Monster Hunter. Um, it wasn't just on uh, Nintendo consoles. Because um, I had a Monster Hunter for PSP, actually. I mean, I didn't know, like, I didn't know this series existed until I saw the trailer at E3. It, to me, it's like a very, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, like, it's fun and all, but to me, it's a game that's, it's just not my style, because it's a little, like, um, to me, the controls bothered me, but then again, I was playing it on a handheld, so, maybe on a console, the controls are a lot different, but to me, it just... It, it's more for environment if you ask me not so much as gameplay it's more of like looking around and just taking in details that they threw in the game um, 
and speaking it's actually speaking of open world adventure games there was this trailer for a VR game there it was like uh this is little mouse warrior thing and uh i think you were some sort of being that was like guiding them along in some ways what it looked like in the trailer it was just a really really weird like environmentally pleasing game or at least i gu or at least i guess that's how you could say it I don't believe that. I don't believe I saw that one. Um, it was towards the... I think it was kind of towards the end of their other um, conference. Um, I wish I could remember what it was called, but it totally slipped my mind. But it's like a VR puzzle-esque game. I was surprised to see, uh, instead of like coming out with a new game, they decided to take an old classic and bring it back to life on the PS4, uh, Shadow of Colossus. I played the crap yeah. out of that game on the PS3, and like, I think I may have traded it back in, but I don't have it anymore, but I'm happy that they're bringing that to PS4 instead of going through uh, rebuying it and then well the system I have on the PS4 is you have to like rebuy it and then you have to like, like stream it if you will to your PS4 so now the graphics aren't that good I mean they're really doing everything from the music down to the graphics yeah it did look really really clean it looked really really smooth but isn't that one of those games where it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a one-time play game? Not really like one-time, as you you can only play it one time, but it's like, you go through what, thir you go through 13 different giant creatures that you have to kill? Dude, you're talking about how like, the storyline, the storyline's the same, no, like how you play it, no matter how many times you play it? Yeah. Yeah, that's Like, I know you can... That's like, I know you could go to, like, uh, different Colossus at a time, I do believe, right? I don't remember if you can or not. It's like, I just remember, like, you would, uh, like, hold your sword up and find a light beam of light, and you would find, and it would point you in the direction, and then when you find it, you had to go find a sweet spot and kill it. Yeah, yeah, I watched, uh... I watched someone play it, and but it was so long ago, I just don't remember. And the next game in your lineup is? Oh my god. Speaking on the topic of VR, um, a game that every, I would say any gamer knows, at least up until this point. It's, to some it's a hit and run, to some, and to some it was like either a hated game or a love it game. And to me, that was the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And yes, I threw the Elder Scrolls part in there for the simple fact that the game is not actually called Skyrim. It's part of the Elder Scrolls series, so I think it's right to call it the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. They're trying but, to put that on everything. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's on PC, it's on PS4, it's on Xbox, it's coming to the Switch, it's coming to VR. Yeah, yeah, and it's finally getting a VR. Now, I, I really do enjoy the game. I really did. I, I've i probably got thousands and thousands and thousands of game time hours into there. I've played it on the PS3 where it originally came out, and I, then I, uh, I played it on the PS4 as well. Yeah, and I'm actually thinking of doing a stream on that here soon, but that's another... That's off this topic. The main thing that I'm getting at is... It's getting a VR. So could you imagine, instead of holding a controller and looking around, you can, you wear this headset and you got the little controllers in your hand. You can control where you block, you can control where you swing, you can look around and, and you're just not hindered. It's insane. Yeah, it's all now, funny. I, that's, I, that's all funny games until your friend comes over and you're not where really you're there and you're gonna swing your sword, smack him in the face. Well, I mean, I'm sure you would put some sort of safety precautions, such as a, like, 
and I have tempted to do this, I might make like a sign that I can put on my door. <laughs> it's gonna say, warning, VR usage in progress. Come back at a later date. <laughs> Come back at a later time, or unless you wanna get bonked in the head, don't walk in. Now, the next title for me is, I'm <clears throat> kinda iffy about it. Uh, it's Destiny 2. I've played, you know, Destiny is good. I have all the expansions. Uh, if you pre-order, you get to play the demo, which I'm gonna do. I just don't want to see it being the same as Destiny One. I know it's like, oh, it's the same. I believe it's made by the same people and it's got part of the same title. I just don't want to see it go through the same steps and be not exactly the same game, but similar to a T. Right, 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 where like the play <laughs> style is kind of the same, you know, you just beam down to a planet, you do the missions for that planet, whatever, then you come back up to the tower, go back down to a planet, do it all over again. I hope that they add something else to it instead of, you know, just doing the story mode, doing raids with friends or other players online and just chilling in the towers. Yeah, I mean, a, a really cool thing that I think that they should throw into something like that is like, um, because when, when I, when I'm playing Destiny 1, I, I feel like it's lacking something. Like, I can, get, it's a good game, don't get me wrong, graphics are good, it's lots of fun, I like just going in, it's like a, you know, it's like a shoot and loot game, it's kind of like Borderlands, but there's just something missing, it's just not grabbing my attention like I hope it would. Because it's kind of, I mean, no matter what class you pick, you're going to go up in there, and you're going to be running and gunning, and that's pretty much it. Running and gunning, that's all you're doing. And even the storyline, it's, it's scattered. It's like really, really scattered. Like, if I could set, if I could literally have a tab that I can set directly for story missions, and just do the story missions, then worry about side quests later, I would do it like that. But to, to me, Destiny just makes you feel lost. Like, it literally made me feel lost when I was playing it. I mean, if you, but if, like, if you do all the story and decide at the same time, like, what, then what happened to me is when I got to the last level, I was the max level you could go. Which was what? It's 40, it was 40. Isn't it? Yeah. Like, before I killed the final boss, I'd gotten to level 40. Yeah, and to me, a game, a game really needs to be like, you don't get to the final level, like, towards the end of the game. Because, um, just putting this in reference, Kingdom Hearts, okay, Kingdom Hearts. The max level you can go in Kingdom Hearts is 99. Alright? Um, in one of the worlds right now, I'm level, like, 40-something trying to get through uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much at the last world so yeah and you know, then um, another game I'm excited for like this one's on, like on the top of my list it is the shadow of Mordor uh, shadow of war I like I actually I like, you're saying. Yeah, I like the it's kind of set in the Lord of the Rings time zone, and you go and you can either kill the orcs or you can convert them on your side. You're in this giant war. I really gotten into the first one, and I was excited for them when they said, "Oh, we're gonna come out with another one." Right. Uh, I haven't played the first one, so I wouldn't know how it went. I think the first one came out on PS3, and then later down the road they had it for PS4, or they could have done both at the same time. I'm not 100% sure on that. I do believe it is out on PS4. Yeah, I mean, I know it's on both, but I'm saying I don't know if it was both on launch, or they had it on the 3, and like, oh, no, it's doing good, we'll drop it on the floor, on the fourth, um, fourth to increase sales and stuff like that. Maybe it was on both at the same time. I don't remember when it came out. But another uh, a game that I'm waiting on 
And you know this very well, Midnight, because I, I talk about this game all the time. Need for Speed Payback. Yes, that one is also on my list. Oh, man. I was watching through E3, and that was literally the only thing that I really wanted to pay a lot of attention to. And so when I saw them, um, when I saw them release the customization gameplay, and then the gameplay trailer, it just blew my mind. Yeah, I like the fact that um, the mission they showed that you can do like uh, burnout style takedowns. And they, I believe they uh, increased the customization that you can do with the cars. Oh yeah, yeah. The customization system for it's very similar to Need for Speed 2015. But what really gets me is that um, they created this system called, uh, what do they describe it as? The derelict system. And what it is is it, it kind of encourages players to go out and just journey the entire world of this game to find these bits and parts of other cars that they can rebuild in their garage and when you rebuild it you also got like super builds which is just highly upgraded forms of that car you got you got a really good car list you got a massive car list it's I'm waiting on it <laughs> You're talking, about like they, hard on it. you're talking about like they did with the crew where you could drive around and you could find old cars and you could find a piece of it. Sort of. Well, yeah, yeah. It's kind of exactly like that, actually. But the way that the they kind of took uh, a little bit of the crew's idea. Because in the crew, whenever you buy a car, you buy it as a full stock. And then you can go to a tuner. And you can tune it to be a street, performance, raid, drag, drift, monster, dirt. Uh, circuit tune it's got different tuning sets for that one car the derelict cars and I don't know if any of the other cars do it I think so based on what I've seen in the trailer but um but it seems like the other cars um, can do that as well and it's kind of similar because when they showed all super builds there was drift off-road, drag, and I think super or something or something like that, kind of like a performance tune, kind of like, you know, they would turn a Beetle into a, uh, a Lamborghini supercar. This next one on my list, I have played all of them, I've completed them all, did a whole series, it is Assassin's Creed Origins, and it's finally in Egypt one of my favorite places and instead of in the old ones you would use um, like a bird's eye view but this one is actually a bird that you can use and I like that in this one you'll have a bow and arrow which is if I when I play RPGs or MMOs it's usually my go-to sit back have a snipe people with a bow or heal people uh right yeah uh, come to think of it, in Assassin's Creed 3, I think you could use a bow. And I think you did use that quite often. Yeah, I believe Assassin's Creed 3 was when you're Connor and you was part of the American Revolution. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've always I wonder been. Who our I wonder who our character's gonna be because, you, and if you, you know, you said you followed the story. Well, um,. What's his, uh, what's his name is Dead? What was his name? Damn it. I don't know which one you're talking about, because I mean, they follow a Desmond. different one each Desmond. game. Desmond. Yeah, 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 but the main the character, the other, the other character behind, behind all this is Desmond, because... They're all the his ancestors. Game, exactly, exactly. But Desmond died before, um, Black Flag. In right. the Black Flag, they used one of his descendants. Right. Now, I, mean, they I don't know. I don't know where that continues off from there. But I'm wondering if the if, if the character that we're going to be playing as in Origins is another Desmond ancestor, or are they finally breaking off of that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, well, they talk about Origins is where it, you know is where 
like if you have an origin it's where you came from what you're all about so i mean it could be like how everything got started right like the actual assassin order but wouldn't it be kind of weird to start it there though speaking that most of the most of the assassin's creed characters either came from somewhere in the arabians or from somewhere in like europe or so I mean, they could have came from, they could have came from anywhere, and they could be anywhere. Just because you're born in one part, I mean, doesn't mean you're gonna stay in there. You know, you could be born and then adventure out through your life. Yeah, because so, cause I mean, they I, could be anywhere. Cause, cause, you, right, you're right. Because the guy in the first game, um, he was, um, he was some form of Arabian. And then the next game in Assassin's Creed 2, they started doing uh, Ezio, I do believe, who is um, European or something like that. Yeah, I'm French, like actually, I think is what it was. No, Italian. Italian is what it was. I'm happy that they're finally venturing in going into Egypt. I've been waiting for them to be going into Egypt for a while now. Right. Which is definitely going to look really, really good. I, I like really it. think that in the, the deserty in the um, E3 looked like kind of at first it was kind of like a Roman, you know, Roman setting where when he was fighting. But I'm just happy. Like, I hope that I can go in and climb on top of a pyramid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or climb onto the Sphinx. Climb onto the pyramid of Sphinx and do the um. And do the dive down into well, I don't know what's gonna like it's been hay, but for all we know, we could be diving down into sand. Which I don't, I think that'd be very painful. Well, I think they would still have some form of hay or some form of straw, something like that you can jump down into. Maybe even just like a pile of like Egyptian fabric, maybe or something like that, because you know the Egyptians were known for making silk and all. I'm sure that we'll find more information. When it when it's closer for it to come out. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And another game that I'm not sure if it's on your list, but I've heard you talking about it. Detroit became human. Detroit become human. Uh, that's a. That's when I saw the trailer, it's kind of a weird game. It's like uh, everyone's half cyborg. No, I wouldn't even say cyborg. I wouldn't even say android. I want to just say they're like... What's a term that I can use? I'll just stick to cyborg. That's the only term I can think of. It's like cybernetic in some way. I like the fact that uh, it's one of those games that you, I mean, you can have multiple options but you can only choose one and that'll affect what happens down the road, which will lead to several different playthroughs of the same game. Kind, kind of, of like, like um, what, what was, was the, the game? game? Until, Until Dawn, Dawn I, think. I think. Yeah, I mean, there's Until Dawn. Um, or, the, all the tell -tale tell -tale or the Telltale games like uh, Minecraft, Minecraft Story, Story Mode or, or um, The Wolf, the Wolf Among, Among Us. Us. Or even, or even Tales, Tales from the Borderlands. Borderlands. I mean, you can go through and play it the same way, but you choose one different thing and put you on a completely different path. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Honestly, Honestly, I think, I think it, looks it looks more, more like Infamous, infamous style, style, if you ask me, because it's, it's kind of like, like, it's like, like good and evil, evil or, or what, well, I, I guess it'd be considered, considered like, like lawful, lawful, evil, or lawful, lawful chaotic, chaotic, something, something like that. that. I mean, you're also trying to save, uh, I guess you can call it the world or your race. Yeah, because yeah, they didn't say, uh, like, we, we don't even know if this is like, uh, if this is like an outer space maybe and like Detroit could be like a, um, a code name. Because it definitely, they all look like they're wearing like a spacesuit-esque kind of thing. Oh, you're talking about like it could be like uh, Mass Effect Andromeda where they've all gone to yeah. a different planet to try and find better life because like the Earth is no longer 
inhabitable or it's blown up. Yeah, yeah. Is there and any? The tr and like, is there any other games that are on your list or anything else that you were looking forward to for E3? Um, I'm not really looking forward to anything else. But well, actually no. Uh, even though Kingdom Hearts 3, okay, Kingdom Hearts 3, I've been following this since 2007, since Kingdom Hearts 2 release. That's 10 years. Um, they released a gameplay trailer at E3, I do believe. It was either E3 or Kingdom Hearts Orchestra. It was one of the two. And, um, it, it, they're just teasing it on right now. Square Enix is teasing it on. They are really hyping this up. And I can't wait to see this as the final installment to this game because I think it needs to end in soon. Another game I'm looking forward to is uh, Final Fantasy VII. I mean, like, that keeps getting, you know, pushed back. But um, yeah, the same that's thing, another one. Well, I mean, the same thing happened with 15. It kept getting pushed back, pushed back. But um, with it being pushed back, they didn't have to release a day one patch. I mean, so you do is install the game, it's ready to go from there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um. And on the term of Final Fantasy, did you see the VR Final Fantasy fishing game? Yes, I thought that was a uh, either like a DLC or like an add-on for Final, Final Fantasy 15 until I saw the trailer and realized it was VR. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a, a VR game thing. thing. I'm like, like really? really? Out of out all topics, topics, you could, you could or out, out of all... all things you could use to make a fishing game out of you decide to use Final Fantasy. Well, I mean, most of them are, uh, like, the hunting games or, you know, the fishing game where you have to go and buy the ride. So, I mean, this is a definitely yeah. change-up for that scene. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. 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 And with them no, putting... My, with them keep pushing back Kingdom Hearts... Or, or not reeling anything and keep pushing back Final Fantasy 7 that's gonna be like Final Fantasy 7 and Kingdom Hearts come in here town near you when you're dead yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right I mean, I mean like, like I said, I said I've, I've already been, been waiting, waiting on Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts 3, 3 for 10 years, years. and we've, we've already, already been waiting, waiting on the Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy 7, 7 remake, remake for what two, two years, years now, now? Or it's gonna, or it's gonna come out when we're old gray and grandpas and so like that and not be able to play video games anymore it is, it's not, it's game, if I release. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a game, but I can still type you a letter. Hey, it can, it can play, play, give it, give it, it a modded controller, controller and it's gonna be like, like a wonked out thing. thing. It's, it's just gonna be, be my cane with, with buttons, buttons on one side. side. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm just, just gonna be playing with one hand. hand. Guitar hero for old people. Oh, oh Jesus Christ, I don't wanna imagine something like that. No, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, able be able to play, play Guitar, guitar Hero when I get old. I probably wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to play, play anything. anything. Like, like everything, everything would be moving, moving so fast, my eyes would be like, what? I could have sworn this car doesn't move this fast. I could have sworn this is only like 100 miles an hour. And it's going like 70 miles an hour. <laughs> is there anything else um, that you're looking forward for E3? I would, I would like, like to, for, them for them next, next year, year to throw, throw because, because they've already thrown, thrown a Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot remake. remake. Spyro, Spyro the Dragon, Dragon needs a redo. redo. You're just trying to make old, it old games. It needs, it needs to, come to come back. back. No, no, it, it needs, needs to. to. If, they've if they've already brought, brought back Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot how, can how can you forget, forget about everyone's favorite little purple dragon? Because that right there was... I spent hours in that game, but that's just my... I mean, it's, it's just, just my, my personal, personal preference, preference that they need to bring it back, back but they, they need, need to bring, to bring it, back. it back. Or, I mean, they could already be in the makings, or what they could be doing is seeing how Crash Bandicoot redone releases, and if it does good, then going back and remaking other older games. Yeah, yeah they, they did, did talk, talk about, about at, the at the conference about old, old games coming back. back and yeah, all. like like with the uh, Xbox X, it should, would be able to go back and play Xbox games. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, like there was a um, a, I don't know if it's a trailer for a game or a movie, but it was another installment in the Resident Evil with um with Leon. Uh, the, the police, police guy? guy. Well, I mean, he was before the outbreak. He was, I believe, he was part of the Secret Service for the president. No, no yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now I remember. remember yeah. yeah. I don't know if you saw the, nice. like if you saw the trailer, but they're uh, like they were looking for a kid, and they're in the room, and the toy car scares the crap out of them, but it keeps going, it keeps going. They look in the corner, and they see a boy, and they try to help him, and tell the they realize the boy's a zombie. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's actually, actually going back, back to the, to the zombie, zombie outbreak. outbreak. Something. Well, I mean, well, technically they're all. Going back to the zombie outbreak, it's just different strands of the zombie outbreak. Yeah, yeah it's just I, from, from seeing, seeing the movies and from seeing the actual, like, like some, some of the, the gameplay, gameplay, they, they went, went from, from like zombies, zombies to just mutants. So, so I don't really, I don't really consider, consider them zombies, zombies as, much as much as I consider, consider them just. You're talking about like the, you're talking about seven with like the mold people. Pretty much, yeah. Kind of like in the Last of Us. Where, where they, they weren't, weren't really, really zombies, zombies. They, they were, were just, just um, fungal infected, infected humans, humans and this fungus, fungus just so happens to trigger certain brain, brain uh, uh, trigger certain, certain brain activity. activity. Well, I believe Seven was going Based back to the original, going back to the original where they tried to scare the crap out of you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah kind of like, kinda like jump, jump scares. scares. Uh, that's, uh, that's all, all I got on my, my list. list. Uh, well, I mean, like I either used up my repertoire. Either if we get, even it's a new game or it's a new movie, I am happy with either of them. I'd oh, say yeah. we. Resident I'd say. Evil. <laughs> I'd say we kind of got a little carried away there. Just, just, just a little, little bit, just a little, little bit. bit. Old, old days, old games, <laughs> old movies. That's gonna conclude episode two of Games and Vapes. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. You can check out Games of Eon on YouTube, on Twitch. You can check me out, Midnight Fang X on Twitch, on YouTube. I hope that I hope that you have enjoyed the episode and we'll hope to see you on the next episode. Goodbye. Goodbye.